Hello everyone and thank you to the members of organizing committee for putting together this symposium on an important topic. My name is Vikas Kumar. I oversee a research team of data scientists and engineers at Kensai, a startup company based out of Seattle where we focus in the area of machine learning applications in healthcare. Today, I will walk you through one of the ways of assessment of fairness we explored in classification models for healthcare and what we did to improve the fairness in the results. A special shout out to Ming Wen for her key contributions and the effort in this paper. Ming was a student at University of Washington Tacoma and worked with us at Kensai as an intern. Unfortunately, she was not able to join us today. I would like to start with following a statement from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. from about 54 years ago on impact of injustice in healthcare. He said, to quote, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health is the most shocking and the most inhuman because it often results in physical death. Bias, discrimination, and unfair practices in healthcare are not hypothetical. They are centuries old. The impact can be more widespread and varied now due to prevalence and the scale of AI applications. Even more so, it is important to carefully consider different notions of fairness in healthcare to different conceptualizations of fairness in usual AI. In order to understand fairness, we need to look at the sources of bias. Here we have a simplified view of model build cycle that includes pre-processing of data, feature construction or selection, the choices of models, and then the metrics. To decode fairness, we have to look at every possible sources of bias in this spectrum. And before I discuss fairness in the context of this spectrum, I want to acknowledge that fairness in healthcare is not only restricted within this spectrum. It can be present on the left of this spectrum based on how and where the data was collected, as well as on the right side of the spectrum based on delivery of care that can lead to unfair and biased outcomes. In this paper, we focus on the model build cycle for the assessment and evaluation of fairness. For instance, in data, the issue can be identified due to underrepresentation of certain cohorts. In features, it can be identified due to the use of protected features such as gender, race, age, etc. In model, the issue could exist due to the choice of hyperparameters and loss functions. And finally, in the metrics, the choice of thresholds that could result to biased and unfair results. We especially looked at some of these stages to assess and address the fairness issue. For instance, optimizing the thresholds, a removal of protected features, as well as sampling strategies to identify as well as reduce any biased or unfair outcomes. We do not discuss an expanding area of work on identifying optimized loss functions for fair models in this paper. Coming to the data set, we included following three data sets for evaluation of the fairness. It included MIMIC-3 dataset for evaluation of fairness in the prediction of whether a patient is likely to stay for shorter or longer period during a hospital admission. Then the thyroid disease dataset, which is based on the prediction of a state of thyroxine binding proteins related to thyroid disease. And finally, the Pima Indians dataset to evaluate the fairness in prediction for the onset of diabetes. Using the length of a state dataset as an example, we now discuss some of our results and the findings. The results based on other datasets can be found in the paper. We start with the characteristics of the length of a state dataset with respect to protected features of age, gender, and race. Here we see a distribution of the age across three buckets, where the blue bar represents the patients with longer stay, and the gray bar represents the patients with shorter stay, with percentages representing the number of patients in that respective category. The second is of gender distribution, where we see that there are more males in the data set than in females, and then finally, we look at the race distribution in the data set. We can see how the data has under or relatively zero representation for race other than white. It is important to note that although this data can be seen as close to actual distribution of such races in the population, but overrepresentation of certain groups for a model can make a model more biased towards that group. And this can be seen. And we can see that bias in the model performance here. 
we observe the differences in the AUC of the model to differ significantly across the different races and especially among the black African American. Now we look at how the choice of thresholds can help assess fairness in the models. Here we are looking at different thresholds that are selected based on UDNC statistics from different cohorts of data. For instance, the threshold for classification based on the entire data set, then the threshold based on only male or female cohort, and we also determine the thresholds based on the combination of these two independent cohorts in terms of average, median, maximum, or minimum. To understand if the model is fair across the gender attribute, we look at the differences in the precision of the model based on these different thresholds. The graph below shows the precision metric for the model against different thresholds on x-axis. The three colored dots in the vertical line represent the precision of model across the three cohorts against the selected threshold. Lower the difference or the variance in the vertical dots, more fair the model is considered across these cohorts. Note that all the differences in precision here are less than 1%. We are looking at a data set of about 47,000 patients, which translates into at least 500 patients likely to be treated unfairly. The rectangle highlighted uh, in the box uh, is where we found the least variance in the precision of model among three cohorts based on the selected threshold. In this plot, the change in the variance is shown between when data used for the model without sampling and then after sampling. We see that balancing of representation of gender reduces the variance or difference in the performance of models across the cohort. This can be seen by the reduced gap between the colored dots in the vertical scale. Uh, similar results are observed across age category, where we saw that sampling of data for each age category, as well as removing the protected attributes from the model resulted in reduced differences in the performance of the model across the age categories by almost 10 to 30. This is the results of ethnicity. We again could see the variance of the performance in the model that decreases by applying similar sampling method and removing the ethnicity from the model. Talking about the performance of model overall, we did not see any significant change after sampling and removal of protected attributes. Finally, related to the fairness in the three methods used in training the models, we found that XGBoost was the most accurate model while the logistic regression is the least accurate one. However, if we compare the variance in AUC score, we could see logistic regression has more fair performance that is a smaller variance than the XGBoost, which has the least fair performance. This suggests that an accurate model does not necessarily imply fair outcomes. As key takeaways from this work, we can see that assessing fairness is a multifaceted problem. The bias in the model can exist due to the choice of threshold, choice of algorithms, as well as in the features and the data. However, these biases can be identified and fairness can be improved in the models by following some very simple techniques, including removal of protected features, optimizing thresholds, and sampling to balance for the underrepresented cohorts in the data. I want to conclude today by sharing about the FAIR ML Health library that Kansai team has released this month. This library is a Python package that can be used to evaluate multiple fairness metrics on any scikit-learn compatible model. You can also find more details about the package and its demo on Mimic 3 data in a exemplar Jupyter notebooks and the tutorial slides that Mohammed and team organized and presented at the KDT conference in July this year. Finally, a call to action to everyone listening today. Come and partner with us. It takes a village to solve fairness in healthcare. Uh, visit us at kensai.com. We are a company where we have been deploying enterprise-grade AI and ML models in healthcare at multiple locations. Uh, and also, as part of this, we are studying fairness across multiple locations, settings, and cohort. This is still a work in progress, and we invite you all. Thank you.